Um, I think we're live now. It's uh, 11 a.m. in the UK. I'm not sure what time it is where you are, um, or if you've been up for the last, uh, whatever it is, 16 hours. Um, if anyone's been up for 16 hours, please let me know. I'd be, uh, I'd be really impressed. Um, we're just going to dive straight in. Um, we have Jonathan and Raymond here who are going to give their presentation. Um, and then we have a couple more after that, um, from one from Alexi and Alexander, um, and then we've got um, Martin and Sorala from Datasite. So I'm going to stop talking, make myself invisible, and pass over to Jonathan. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, I, I too have no idea what time it is in the world. I haven't been up all night, but I know Todd in the background has, so that's pretty impressive. So welcome um, uh, to the showing of uh, also known as, um, it's starring myself, Jonathan Clark, I'm the managing agent for the DOI Foundation, and as Raymond Drury from Movie Labs, um, and we're going to do a bit of a tag team back and forth. <clears throat> and of course, you all are our guest stars. I want you to use the chat, please, to answer the questions in our movie quiz we have for you, and also uh, to ask any questions. Um, feel free, because we're tag teaming, I'm going to be checking the chat uh, for questions, so feel free. Um, if all you do is ask questions and we show none of the slides, that's fine too. Um, what we're talking today, also known as, it's all about alternate uh, identifiers. Um, we're going to show you some use cases from IDA, that's the uh, persistent identifier for movies and AV content, TV and stuff like that. And each example, we have a movie for you. Um, so I'm going to start by way of, uh, and can we, Tom, can you put up the, so the presentation is a bit bigger than this? Fantastic. So by way of introduction, the first movie, it's a quiz. There are three clues. The first clue, and you've got to guess the movie. And please, if you guess the movie, put it into chat. So the question is, based on this image and this image alone, what's the movie? I'll give you a couple of minutes. The clues get easier. Kill Bill. Oh, nice one. It's not a good idea, but it's not. Kill Bill 1. No, it's not Kill Bill at all. It's not even Tarantino. Shogun. Okay, right. So that's good. Seven, seven. Oh, my goodness. Philip, how did you do that? That is clever. Here's the second one. Great quote. I don't like boats and I don't like water. I'm a man, not a fish. Close. Well, I look up. Philip got it. Philip got it early. Well done, Philip. It's actually Highlander. And of course, those of you that know Highlander know that um, the, the famous quote is there can be only one. And that's actually what we used to say about persistent identifiers. We used to say there can only be one, one object, one identifier. And that was 20, 20 years ago. And we've come a long way since then. And this presentation is all about what happens when you don't do that, when you have multiple identifiers all saying different things, all referring to the same object. And in IDA speak, they call them alternate IDs. And that's really what the whole presentation is about. So we're going to go to the next quiz. Here's the next movie. So clue number one. It's a movie from 1942, and it won Oscars for Best Director, Best Picture, and Best Adapted Screenplay. Yeah, Philip's the master here. Let's see if he gets this one. 1942, long time ago. It's in the war. Okay, let a few guesses come in and then I'll go straight to the next one. Oh my God, he's got it again. Philip, you're on fire. There you go. Round up the usual suspects was my next clue. I think, Philip, next one, you, 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 you need to step out. And, of course, there it is. Wonderful movie. One of my favorite movies of all time. Oh, I've got a glitch on my computer. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm going to hand over to Raymond. Ah. 
giving you the next one. That's not good. I'm going to hand over to Raymond to talk about Casablanca. Identifiers in the audiovisual space is that there's so many of them. Um, we clearly can't call things Casablanca just because of their name. There are actually, there's Casablanca the movie, there's Casablanca 2019 Egyptian suspense drama, there's a Casablanca TV series that Warner Brothers did in 1955 to try to serialize the movie. Um, and then in the 1980s, there was a prequel to Casablanca starring David Soule of Starsky and Hutch, which I have never watched and probably never will. Um, but this page you're seeing, you're seeing here, or should be seeing as soon as Tom puts it up, um, shows you all the things in Eider that have Casablanca in the title. And they're, they're a night in Casablanca is the Marx Brothers comedy, and there are other Casablanca things. Um, there's all sorts of stuff based on it. Most of these have very little to do with it. But um, what I'm showing is I'm only extracting um, the other, some, of, some of the other IDs we have. So we have this one, which is from Wikidata. And I have a link to Wikipedia, and that's interesting because we don't have an identifier for Wikipedia in Eider, but we can extract one from the Wikidata link. And that means we can start doing the whole linked data thing and following references and getting more information. We have references from IMDB, which I'm sure you all know. TMDB is another movie database that has different things. And we also have identifiers from the American and British Film Institutes. And you'll see up here, I hope the AFI shows up for me. So here's the AFI catalog entry. There's their ID, which is what's in IDER. Um, and they have an API that I'm not going to I'm not using today. Um, so the IDA record itself has a lot more things in it. We've got the name, the title, the reference metadata, and so on, the production company, the year. Then we start getting down to the interesting things, which include all these alternate ident identifiers that IDA members have put in. Um, IDA is a very communal exercise. Um, we have large members who pay more money, small members who pay less money or no money, and they help us populate it. Um, so Common Sense does parental ratings. ISAN is an ISO standard for audiovisual works. IVA is an archive for trailers. Um, and something to note about these is some of these have a relationship. So we say this is the same, is same as IMDB, because we know a human or a machine that we trust has told us it really is the same. Um, whereas this Amazon one, we're not so sure, so we don't say the same. And then there's Netflix and Warner Brothers, who are the original producer. Um, there are just lots and lots and lots of these. Comcast, ITV has shown it. Sony has it in their database for some reason. This one tracks European ticket sales. And all of these help make us more secure about the record and give people who follow this identifier more information about it. So there, I think I'll end with a few bits of useful trivia on Casablanca. I see somebody in the chat has already said, he never says, play it again, Sam, which is absolutely true. It's play it, Sam. You played it for him. You can play it for me. Play as time goes by. Um, and um, the other thing is the play, Everybody Comes to Rick, on which Casablanca was based, was not produced on stage until 1991. Um, Warner Brothers bought the rights to the play before it was ever, ever produced. Um, for a relatively small amount of money, which en ended up in lawsuits later, but it's Hollywood, so lawsuits will always be with us. And the last thing here is we have the Quebecois Film Archive, the Hungarian Film Archive, the Greek National Archive, the an Israeli Film Archive, the Czech National Film Archive. So we have tell you a lot of what a lot of people think about Casablanca. Um, and since it's an old movie and a famous movie and a very important movie for a lot of reasons, there are lots and lots and lots of references here 
and every single one of these has been added by someone who thinks it's important and many of them are used by people and so now i think back to jonathan great thanks raymond um one sec we appear to be having fun technical difficulties here um where jonathan has accepted to come back on screen but uh crowdcast is um not actually doing that uh so bear with me one second try and do it again So by way of update, we just tried again. It's still not working. Uh, yeah, perhaps, um, Jonathan, if you can hear me, can you refresh your browser? Um, and you should appear back in conference. Alas, I don't have Jonathan's slides. Yeah, I'm looking forward to more quiz. And, uh... and he's, he's a better front man than I am anyway. <laughs> So yeah, the um, the crowdcast is definitely saying he's here. Um, yeah. So he's I see, <laughs> while we're here, I see a question in um in um the chat about versions of movies and PIDs and so on. Um, one of our examples will cover that in some detail. So yes, versions are maddeningly difficult, but but they can be dealt with with patience and care and a community that is working together with with identical definitions of what a version is hmm. okay so jonathan's letting me know in uh, the back that he's having to restart his browser unfortunately um so apologies again for this but he is on his way um, and here he appears now. There he is. There he is. Fantastic. Look, we're uh, we're obviously professionals and very good at this. Uh, and... Okay, let me share my screen again. Sorry about this, everyone. Suze, you had lots of questions. Ask them, please. Here we go. Next movie. So this one's a tough one. Maybe uh, hopefully no one's going to get this one until we get through. So which movie is this? And I hope it doesn't break the, I uh, hope that movie still doesn't break our code of conduct. Right, any ideas? Which movie is this? Looks kind of Japanese, maybe? Hmm. Anyone in the chat? Okay, let's go to coup number two. It is written, he who makes the best egg salad shall rule over heaven and earth. Don't ask me why egg salad. I've got enough aggravation. Oh, it's worth watching, Todd. It's a fun movie. The best egg salad in the world. No? Okay, here we go. We knew this one would be a difficult one. There's a clue. Oh, yeah, James Bond movie. That's a pretty good guess. Japanese James Bond. Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> Love it. Okay, I'm going to go to this because we lost a bit of time for there. So it's a famous movie, What's Up, Tiger Lily? Back to you, Raymond, to tell us about that. Okay. So What's Up, Tiger Lily is Woody Allen's first, the f first film that he directed. And it's, he actually didn't shoot much footage for it. Um, he, what he did was he took a single film from a Japanese spy franchise, um, called Key of Key, the, the film was called Key of Keys, um, and recut it, added a completely new plot and completely new dialogue, edited it together and said, this is my movie. 
So it has nothing to do with the original film except for the video footage. Um, the studio thought it was too short, so they added another half hour from of a movie called um, Secret International Secret Police, A Barrel of Gunpowder, um, which they added without Woody Allen's permission, and he really disliked it, and that taught him a lot about when he wanted to be a director, how to retain directorial control. So it's important to know what it came from. So here's What's Up Tiger Lily. We've got lots of good ideas for it. And if we go look at it in Eider, we see that it has an ex another title, who produced it. We list the original producer and Woody Allen's company. And it's the same as the usual things, IMDb, Netflix, um, Warner Brothers, um, Warner Brothers, all that. But down here at the very bottom, um, we have two IMDb IDs that have the relation is derived from. And what that means is it's not the same enough to be counted as the same movie. But there is so much in common that the relationship is worth retaining. So this one, I believe, is um, Key of Keys, and this one is um, Keg of Powder or Barrel of Gunpowder, depending on how you look at it. Um, and we have very precise definitions about what is an actual version of a movie or an edit in some studio parlance or what some people call an alpha in some studios versus what's a derivative work. And that's also very important for legal reasons and copyright reasons and distribution reasons and so on. Um, so if we click here, um, there is, um, if my internet will wake up, anyway, you sh this this will be the internet record, I, the IMDb record for Key of Keys, but I think it's not happy, so we'll just stop that. So the important thing here is that when you use IDER through the API, you get not just the ID, but the relationship it has, um, so you can decide what to do with it in your code or in your display and that sort of thing. Um, so Jonathan, back to you, I think. Great. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. There we go. Um, we actually, let's do a little time out for a couple of questions. And um, there's a question from Jakob. Uh, who are the people editing IDER and what's their motivation to do so? All right. So IDER is um, a membership community. It's um, a nonprofit. Um, and we have some very, very big members, um, large studios, um, Viacom, Google, Netflix, Amazon Studios, and a bunch of the National Archives, the American and British Film Institutes, um, a couple smaller ones, a lot of people in the production and distribution chain. And what they use IDER for is um, basically um, the logistics of distributing digital content. That was its initial use, and it's still what it's mostly used for. However, a lot of people and companies that put up individual sites will need more metadata, and they appreciate the fact that there are all these other identifiers for them to get metadata from. And the other reason we have these is that one studio that I will not name when we started with IDER, had 27 internal databases, all of which had different IDs in them. They have since reduced that down to five, and they kept all those old IDs, but they put them all in IDER and now use IDER as a way of cross-linking their legacy systems. So that's their incentive. There's The archives do it out of their public mission. Um, anybody who's an IDER member can submit changes. Um, some people are allowed to just make changes because they're on the access control list for various things. Um, it's, it's, it's very much a communal effort. And IDER staff um, will occasionally run through Wikidata and find things that we didn't know about before. 
and a quick one, and then we'll move on to our final movie. Is there an ID for movies in the Criterion Collection? I don't think so. Okay, then we're going to our final movie. So, uh, which movie is this? This is, a, those of you who are art world, you know this is a famous Edward Hopper painting. And the director of this movie said that this painting in particular uh, really inspired him for the mood of the movie. So that's our first clue. This is such a well-known movie that I had to be really obscure with the first clue. Okay, Mike has got another question. Thank you. Have we got any any guesses for what movie this might be? Dirty Harry. Or Dirty Harry? Oh, no, Dirty Harry. Philip, no. Oh, almost. No, it has nothing to do with that, actually. A couple more uh, guesses, and then I'll do the next clue. Okay, here's a still from the movie. And a great quote. Love this quote. All those moments will be lost in time, like tears in rain. Oh, Suze, you got it. Well done. Excellent. Electric sheep, you got it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Blade Runner. Raymond, what can you tell us about Blade Runner? All right. Let me reshare. So Blade Runner is where we were going to talk about all the issues of versioning because people who are a little bit in the know know that there is the original release there's um the director's cut there's the final cut there's so it, its production history is basically um there was a um a work print shown at an early screening that was discovered later and showed later that's not in ida right now since it's not in distribution um there's the original with the happy ending there's a director's cut that changed the ending and added the unicorn scene. Um, and then, but Ridley Scott still didn't like that. Then finally things came around and he got full creative control to make the movie he wanted to make. He shot some more stuff, did some more editing and came out with Blade Runner, the final cut. I'm not sure I believe that, but you know, it is the one he says that he wanted. So, Anyway, in Eider, we have Blade Runner, we have Blade Runner 2049, and if we go to Eider itself, um, Blade Runner is relatively straightforward, right? Just Blade Runner, the abstract concept of a film called Blade Runner with Ridley Scott as director and Harrison Ford and so on and so on. Um, I want you to pay attention to this identifier here from Veronica Magazine, who are a Dutch um, program guide data provider. Um, <clears throat> But now, if we look at Eider, there's this thing called relationships. Now we see we have these things called edits, which are what you can loosely think of as a version. So we have these are all original edits. Um, I don't know which of these is which, but one of them is the original theatrical release. One is the original broadcast release, which had censorship cuts. And one of these is a French release which had um, some minor minor changes in it. Um, so then we have Blade Runner, the director's cut, and I have that here. So here's the record in Eider for Blade Runner, the director's cut. It says, my parent is this, which is the original Blade Runner record. And it has um, some distribution IDs from a particular online video place and a different id from veronica magazine so they are enough in the know that they give different ids to blade runner and blade runner the director's cut which is good of them because a lot of people like imdb for example just use the same same id saying they're the same movie and we say but you know they're the same but they're different so this is where you have to be very clearly defining about what does the same as mean um, and it gets harder and harder the further down you go. I saw one thing in the chat about language versions, um, which I'll come back to in a minute. And then, so if you look back at the Eider edits, we have two edits of the final cut. Um, unsurprisingly, one is the original theatrical release. And yet again, one of them is the French version, which had some 
edits I don't know what for the French market. And here is Eider, the Eider record for Blade Runner, the final cut. Um, it's got more distribution numbers. It has two IDs from ISAN. Um, don't know why they have a duplicate. Um, Variety magazine treats it as a different movie, and the BBC only says Blade Runner on their web page. But if you read the description and take a look, it's the final cut. So that ID has been put here. Um, so that's the end of Blade Runner on on language versions. Um, my favorite example of that is a very very wonderful Japanese film called My Neighbor Totoro by by um. Hayao Miyazaki. If you haven't watched it, you really should. It's just a lovely, lovely movie. And in Eider, it has multiple versions. It has the original Japanese theatrical release, an American theatrical release, a French theatrical release, and two English online versions, one that Fox did with a mediocre voice cast and one that Disney did. So since the voice casts are different, um, which in turn changes the end credits. We count them as two different edits of, of Totoro. Um, so Blade Runner in, in movie lore is one of those examples of the director ran amok, but he, he ended up getting what he wanted. Um, the other thing that occasionally bugs me about Blade Runner is that it got lots of technical Oscar nominations, but didn't win anything, but it did win a BAFTA, which is nice, and it did win a Hugo Award, which is um, the premier award, award for um, science fiction, literature, and film. Um, so now, I guess, back to Jonathan. Thank you very much. Just going to put the final slide on. Thank you. Um, so thank you very much for everyone. Uh, we've run out of time. Um, what we hope to show you today just really briefly was the power of alternate IDs. And in fact, if you looked, Ida actually go out and look for them because they realize that the more they have in their system, um, the richer their database is, the more useful it is. And I think this is the message that, that you can rely on, on the information that you get, but you can also curate your identifier and add value to it and add value to the metadata. So one example that Raymond, I think, mentioned, but it went quickly, was they can crawl Wikipedia looking for links, and they curate them back in and go, hey, there's a link to that movie that we didn't know about, and they'll add it to the record. So they make it richer and richer and richer. And I think that's really cool, and we wanted to share it with you. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'll be on Slack to answer any questions. Um, and don't be strange. I'm sorry we didn't get to all of the questions. Um, but uh, that was a technical glitch in the middle that ran that. So thank you very much, and um, see you next time. The movie near you. That was great. Thanks, both. Thank I you. Uh, really enjoyed that. Um, I read the book Electric Sheep when I was a teenager, and it's a brilliant, brilliant novel, so I recommend everyone go 